Mona Lisa 3 is a clinical trial looking at the combination of fulvestrant with ribocyclib um, in patients who were either not previously treated for metastatic ER positive breast cancer or had up to one prior line of therapy. So the, the sort of unique feature about this study is the fact that it did have a subset population of patients who were first line. Women received fulvestrin at the 500 milligram dosing in combination with ribocyclib or in combination with placebo. And not surprisingly, similar to the results that were already presented for palbocyclib and abemocyclib in this setting, the hazard ratio in favor of ribocyclib was around 0.59 and in favor of the use of ribocyclib. In terms of actual median progression-free survival, patients who received ribocyclib had over a 20-month median progression-free survival, and it was just over 12 months or so in patients who received placebo, so about an eight-month improvement. There was no new safety signal from this data. Um, the safety of ribocyclib looks consistent with previously reported safety, with grade 3, 4 neutropenia being the most common side effect. QTC prolongation was um, evaluated or patients were evaluated to um, make sure they weren't having QTC prolongation. And actually there was uh, consistent results from this study. About 6% of patients had some prolongation. Um, this was not serious. There were no new signals here um, in patients treated with ribocyclib and it was 3% in the placebo arm. The rationale for starting with the fulvestrin and the first line therapy is based on um, a lot of data that has uh, proceeded in the past several years, uh, stemming from multiple trials, including FIRST and FALCON, and also the SWOG uh, trials as well that looked at the efficacy of fulvestrin um, in the first-line setting, um, either alone or in the case of the SWOG study, it was in combination with an aromatase inhibitor. And those studies had shown that in particular subsets of patients, uh, there was a benefit associated with starting off with fulvestrin compared to an aromatase inhibitor. And so it led to uh, the question being posed uh, during the conception of uh, Mona Lisa 3 to include those patients in the trial to see if there was a benefit that could be seen with fulvestrin in combination with a CDK4-6 inhibitor in those uh, de novo metastatic patients. If you look at the general benefits when ribocyclib is added to an endocrine therapy, we have seen consistent doubling of progression-free survival, regardless of whether the partner is an aromatase inhibitor or a fulvestrant or even tamoxifen in the case of the Mona Lisa 7 trial. All of them generated the same degree of benefit. Now, of course, what's important in the outcome of the patient is the line of therapy in which they're receiving it. Most patients with endocrine therapy in the first line will have an expected PFS of about 12 months and it'll be doubled with a CDK inhibitor. But in the second line, that is much shorter. So if fulvestrant is given in the second line, we typically see disease-free survivals that are more in the four to five month range. Now in the Mona Lisa 3 study, fulvestrant was used either first or second line, so they were somewhere in between. They were actually closer to what we see in first line therapy because some of those patients were in first line. Um, now, what you use as your endocrine partner in first line has evolved a little bit. At the beginning of the CDK inhibitor trials, aromatase inhibitors were generally considered first line and fulvestrant second line. Uh, but in the last couple of years, since the publication of the FALCON trial, we're now realizing that you can use fulvestrant in the first line, get equivalent results. Uh, and presumably, when those patients progress, you can use aromatase inhibitors and, and, and use the reverse sequence, although we don't have a lot of data on that yet. Uh, because the, the whole idea of using fulvestrant up front is relatively new. But nevertheless, that gives us some flexibility as oncologists and as patients in making decisions. Uh, I feel that based on the data we have, you, one can use the endocrine partner of either aromatase inhibitor or a fulvestrant. In fact, in someone who's intolerant of an aromatase inhibitor and fulvestrant, you could even use tamoxifen, even though we tend not to use that drug as much. There does appear to be some uh, subtle differences between the um, uh, hormonal therapies, not so much the different aromatase inhibitor therapies. I think most physicians would feel that they're uh, relatively equivalent when it comes to using the oral agents uh, such as letrozole or anastrozole. 
Um, however, with regards to fulvestrin, uh, there is a thought that due to its mechanism of action being fundamentally different from aromatase inhibitors, that it actually may uh, affect the natural history of the disease and treat certain types of hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer better than an aromatase inhibitor.